plan is essential before we even commence grazing uh, an irrigated tropical pasture. The sort of things we get, need to know, first of all, what's the growth rate at the, this month of the year? It can vary from 60 to 150 kilos a hectare a day. Um, what's the weight of our cattle? How much will they eat? How many cells, how many paddocks will I need uh, to, to manage these cattle, grazing for a maximum of two days at a time? So how long is it going to take to come back for in the rotation? All this is essential, otherwise we're certainly going to run into trouble running out of grass and just as catastrophic, having too much grass that we can't manage. A quick example, let's think of a 250 kilogram steer eating two and a half percent of its body weight, six kilos a day. Um, the growth rate, 130 kilos a hectare a day. So the cattle are going to eat six kilos, but expect 50 to 60 percent utilization of what's growing. So they're going to need not six, but 10 to 12 kilos of pasture a day. So that tells me I'm going to need for a mob of about a thousand and these are the sort of mob sizes that we might need, I'm going to need probably about 90 hectares. And in a rotation where the pasture is growing, uh, I'm at that growth rate, I'm probably going to need seven, six, seven, eight cells. So before the pasture is grazed and then regrows that required biomass for the next grazing. So that sets me in place. A budget's only a budget, it has to be managed but that gives us a plan to start with. It's very important that we follow guidelines in grazing these pastures uh, because it's the guidelines that give us the ability to harvest the, the most amount of grass in the right form to generate cattle growth and also to keep the pasture growing. It's very important. We are aware of the growth rate of the pasture and we're aware of what's good for cattle to eat and a level of about between two and two and a half thousand kilos of dry matter per hectare is the measure we use as an entry level. Now, to estimate that or measure it is important and there's a variety of ways you can do it. First of all, don't be deterred by height because density is very important, but the most important thing, the most, the clearest way we find is to have a calibrated eye and that you can calibrate your eye from a quadrant cut which you can do and quite accurately estimate what's there. It's not hard to get a, a good ballpark figure of kilos a hectare of dry matter. That's what cattle eat is kilos and that's what we want to measure. So we can calibrate our eye, we can have a, a pasture meter, uh, we can have leaf stage of a pasture. We'd like plants to be not too far beyond the three leaf stage and again that, that would normally the, the plant would be at that biomass after three leaves and leaves emerge at different rates at different times of the year. So that entry level of two to, to, to ideally no more than two and a half thousand kilos per hectare of dry matter is what we'd like. The other guideline is we want them to eat that and be out of the paddock within two days. That's important. If we were dairy farmers we'd have them out in 12 hours or 24 hours. But the scale of this operation at the moment, we're, we're saying let's try and graze in within two days. Whatever, for that two and a half thousand kilos, that two thousand kilos of biomass, we want to eat that down to 500 in two days. So hence the need for a lot of cattle and we, to monitor the grazing. Now if our planning has been done correctly, we'll have an estimate of the number of cattle, how much they're eating and we can expect them to eat it in one and a half, two and a half days and be ready to move them on to the next cell. Look, the paddock we're in now is probably halfway through its two days of grazing. Already we've got an amount of patch grazing with some bits not very much grazed, other bits grazed quite close to the ground. And if you look closely, you can actually see the bits that were grazed, say, early yesterday, there's already some young leaves starting to emerge again. Now, the, the problem is if we leave cattle in for more than two days, they'll come back and keep grazing those areas they've already grazed, and that is not good for the pasture. It also lessens their intake, and it's not good for their weight gain, but that's the nature of cattle grazing. So hence, we'd like them to be out 
cleanly graze pasture within two days. Obviously, the longer they're in it, uh, the more trampling there is, the more um, soiling with manure there is, and hence the, 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 the lower the efficiency of utilisation becomes, uh, the lower the weight gain of the cattle. So to optimise that weight gain and pasture, that, that as short as possible a time, and at the moment we're saying two days in, in one pasture. Now, the cattle need somewhere to go, so already we have planned the next move and even the next two moves because we need to have that entry level in that two to two and a half thousand kilos again for them to go into. And so that's very important to keep up that efficiency of presentation of grass, exit, exit and entry and exit level. But we've got to, out of the, the cattle come out when it's about 500 kilos a hectare like we see here. Now there still, still seems to be quite a bit of grass, but in fact that's there so the pasture can regrow quickly. The consequences of going beyond this for another day or two, the pasture is overgrazed and takes much longer to recover. The cattle's intake is less and so their growth rate is less, so we avoid that. Well here we've got a very healthy tropical grass pasture but it is really at the stage obviously of being a hay crop. Now I'm not sure how old this is but it, it may it looks leafy and obviously there's a leafy canopy but under that leaf is essentially a majority of stem and uh, I think the main message is we should not be even tempted in our wildest dreams to put cattle into a crop approaching this because physically it's going to be trampled and that makes it inaccessible. The small amount of leaf there is quickly eaten and then made inaccessible by trampling. And it actually, in my experience, it can become quite a problem with, um, to actually get it off the ground, even getting a mower under it sometimes. So I'm just saying is, obviously cattle can escape and get into a paddock, but if, we've got, if we're in a grazing rotation, uh, a pasture getting into this stage, we shouldn't contemplate it. We should be calling in the the mowing equipment long before it gets here. The, the fertiliser, the labour, the cost of growing this tonnage is really not being recovered by the cattle, which is really the only way we are getting paid. It just hats off to this grass for what it can do. Rhodes grass and panic, they're amazing grasses, but we need to manage them. It's really important to calibrate your visual estimates of the dry matter or feed on offer in the paddock and the best way to do that is with biomass cuts. So all you need is four things. First of all a quadrant which you can make with PVC. It doesn't really matter what size it is as long as you know what the measurements are so you can use it in your calculation. Um, a set of battery operated cutters, um, some kitchen scales and a bucket or a paper bag. So once you've chosen an area that's representative of the paddock, um, you place your quadrant down. So the cutting height is also important. It needs to be cut at the grazing height, which might be between seven and 10 centimetres. Um, and in a hay cutting situation like this, it might be a little bit taller than that. And you wanna take about three quadrants per grazing area and bolt them together to make a good calculation. So now we've got our fresh cut bulked into this bucket. We're going to weigh it on a set of kitchen scales, um, but it's really important that we next convert this to dry matter. So if you have the ability to dry this in an oven to it's oven dry, that's great. But if not, we can use a rule of thumb. So in the wet season, we assume that this is 20% dry matter. 
and in the dry season it's 25% dry matter. So once this is converted to a dry matter, um, grams of dry matter, then we can convert it into tonnes per hectare by using a calculation um, based on the size of your quadrant.